Our Earth, this tiny, precious planet hiding somewhere in this immense universe, is being dragged by the arm of one of the universe's billions of galaxies, the Milky Way that is moving through space with a shooting speed of 2 million km per hour. But no need to buckle up. Seemingly everything is under control, but when you look around a bit better, you realize it may not be the case entirely. Hi, my name is Adrian and I am an oil painter who loves to put something extra into the art. This time I would like to show you a time lapse of a painting which was inspired by, well, the end of the world and how we could cope with the anxiety and maintain our mental health even when the burning global issues make us wonder about the future. When I think about the end, it can come in so many ways and forms. One is obviously my own death, then the fact that I will have to face the loss of my loved ones. Then there is the end of this current civilization or even us as human species. But of course the day when all life on earth will be extinct will also come eventually. And most probably this planet will be also swallowed by the swelling sun within a few billion years. And of course the possibility of a big finale when everything that ever existed disappears into an infinite nothingness. And even time and space, those two essential entangled dimensions are lost forever. The end of everything when the universe goes to its eternal darkness. So as you see, the end is unavoidable. But I am not afraid of my own death. This is the fate of everyone who ever existed before us, or anyone who will be born after we are long gone. Everything will come to an end because this is the nature of things and otherwise there would be no relevance or significance or meaning to life. Death shows what is at stake. I know that it can be scary sometimes because it's the big unknown, it's barely imaginable. Going to a dreamless sleep without ever waking up, it's really strange, but it's part of life. And anyway, once it's over, I will truly not care anymore. But there is one thing that I am actually scared of. To go away when it's too early. When I feel that there is still so much more to do, so much more to give, to say, to see, to paint. I want to die without regrets, without wondering about the opportunities or missed, and of course without a broken heart because I could not spend enough precious time with those I love the most. So when it comes to Earth, this beautiful one-of-its-kind planet, this piece of rock which happened to be at a location in space where everything just happened in the right way, with all its unrepeatable and unlikely chain of events which led to the source of life. So when it comes to Earth, I feel the exact same way. I don't want it to be ruined or damaged before its natural end would do the same for it. And even if I know that the death of Earth and everything living in it is inevitable, when I see the global issues that we are currently facing, it makes me worried about the future of life on this planet. On the other hand, the improvement of our lives are enormous. The fact that life in itself has a much higher value than ever before in history, the fact that we have so much more rights and protection and support in most of the countries in the world, the improvement in medicine and the successful fight against deadly diseases, and the effect of advanced technologies on everyday life. On the other hand, many times I feel that we have lost control over the global processes and it's sometimes frightening. Maybe I am wrong, but sometimes it seems that we may not have the power anymore to change the course of events and deviate from the path where history has led us, as if we were stuck on a track without the railroad switch. Sometimes it's easier to believe that politicians intentionally don't allow certain changes out of hunger for more power and money. Because then at least we can have the illusion that someone up there has some access for governing and guiding the things around us. And of course, no question, they can induce some impact, but what if over certain processes simply no one has the power to act upon? Let's take climate change as an example. I believe that the complexity of this issue is on a very high level. So maybe no one actually knows how to solve it in a way that would not cause other serious issues in society. There are many yearly conferences on the climate issue where the world leaders sit together with experts 
and year by year, there is no consistent agreement on such actions which would significantly improve the ecosystem, the effect of human activity on the environment in the near future. Surely we should not be naive about the sacrifices that countries should make if they were really serious about this problem. And of course, some steps are taken, but as far as I can understand, nothing that would measure up to the seriousness of the problem itself. So I brought up this example because it shows so well the complexity of a major global problem and how difficult it can be to take action immediately. I think I can say without exaggeration that economic growth became one of the main driving forces of the global processes. And there is nothing wrong with growth and improvement in itself, of course, but the idea of forever or infinitely increasing GDP is, in my opinion, a myth and it is completely unsustainable and impossible. I think that somewhere deep down everyone knows this. But it seems that the world is already set on this course, and unfortunately the end of this comes with unforeseeable consequences. Because obviously, production and growth with our level of technology, although it's very good, but still, it comes with a cost. It is clear that the resources that we are using right now are already taken or being borrowed from the next generation. For example, did you hear about the Earth Overshoot Day? This is a date every year when humanity has already used up all biological resources that Earth can regenerate during the entire year. As an example, in 1971 the yearly resources were consumed by the end of the year in the month of December. By 2000 the date shifted to the beginning of October and in 2022 it fell to the end of July, which means that we are consuming at a rate as if we had 1.75, so almost two planets of Earths. So what is this if not an indication of lost control over the global processes? As one of my favorite public figures says, there is no one in the cockpit, we are in a blind flight, but our biggest problem is that why the champagne is not cold enough and when will the last caviar be served before we hit the ground? And actually this is just one side of the story. On the other hand, it's the opposite of overconsumption. On the other half of the world, people are facing extreme poverty, suffering daily from hunger and malnutrition, and no access to clean water, no medication, and no opportunities. It is somehow crazy that the two of the main problems that we are facing are exactly the opposites. Overconsumption in one part of the world, while poverty in the other. And obviously, only those can afford to have philosophical discussion about all these global issues and can make some effort to try to solve it who are having a certain standard of living. Therefore have the privilege to spend time and energy on these thoughts because our most basic, most important and most burning problems in a wealthier part of the planet is not how we will survive today and how we will feed ourselves and our families. Or in other words, for one who is on the bottom of Maslow's pyramid of needs, the issues of the world, or the state of the global environment, or even the direct environment, will never ever be something to be directly concerned about. Because it's impossible when you are practically fighting for your basic needs and survival. On the very top of Maslow's pyramid of needs, among others, there are the concepts of self-actualization, self-growth, and morals. Even these could seem unreachable for many of the people even in the more developed countries because of low wages and dependency on a corrupt system. So sometimes I actually wonder how the world would look like if poverty would be eradicated, if all the people had at least the necessities, if families could afford to have roof above their head, have three meals a day, clean water to drink, access to basic hygiene and medication. If kids wouldn't have to worry about these things, so they could rather get to school and learn about the world and find out what they want to do and what they are the best at. What if the larger extent of the population could afford at least this? Would more and more people have the privilege to start to care about the environment? Would more people be striving for their best possible version of themselves? What would be our potential as human species? And I just can hope that one day we will find it out.
And I know that this is just a small contribution, but I decided that I will support the education of kids in poor countries with the donation of 50% of whatever profit I make from this piece of art, being of selling of prints or selling of the original painting itself, or if I ever get monetized on YouTube, the income on this video. Of course, I will always put this information out when time comes. I did not yet decide on the organization, so if you have any recommendation, then please leave it in the comment section. By the way, the original piece is already available and I will put the link below and the prints will also come later. So I am sometimes thinking how we can handle this feeling. The feeling of watching the world burn without having the power to change it. If there is one brilliant piece of art that could give me the chills while presenting exactly this atmosphere was the movie Melancholia from Lars von Trier, which I very much recommend by the way. The feeling that you have no control over what will happen on a large scale or the fact that the end of everything is inevitable and you just happen to be there merely as an observer, just like the girl in the painting. But if you think about it, she has the privilege to stand on the moon safely while everything is burning on earth. She has the privilege to see through these issues and to have an overview of what is happening around her. She is learning to be in peace within herself, even when the world is in flames and in chaos. She is learning to breathe, even when everything seems to be unbreathable around her. She starts the change with and within herself. And if you have the privilege, just like the girl, to see through of these issues and understand the world, then I recommend the same to you, to start the change within yourself. Because, in the end, the only thing you can truly control is yourself. The rest is and always was just an illusion. Living a life with high standards of moral values, trying to reach a high level of consciousness, and living with actions that cause the least possible harm or no harm at all to our surrounding is something that one individual can actually strive to do. And of course, finding something that is important to us, something that we enjoy and adds a deeper meaning to our life, is also something that helps a lot when we cope with such feelings. But if you see, the girl in the painting is not entirely alone. The dog next to her represents the importance and the value of true and honest companionship and the realization that this will always matter to us human beings. And the simple life and desires of a dog are always good reminders that sometimes the very little and simple things can be enough to keep ourselves happy. Thank you for watching this video and I know that these are not the easiest topics but I felt the need to paint this piece and talk about these issues. And of course this is just my opinion, I am not an expert in environmental science or economics, I drew my own conclusions based on what I see around me based on my readings and videos I watched, interviews and discussions I listened to. And the length of this video is not enough to go into larger depths and I feel that I could only scratch the surface of these issues. But I have so many painting ideas which I am planning to bring into life in the future. Among these, many are inspired by the mentioned topic, so I'm pretty sure that there will be more occasions to talk in depth. If you enjoyed this time lapse, please like the video and tell me your opinion in the comments. I hope to see you soon. Have a good day. Bye.